In this lesson, we're going to focus on averages and the many different ways in which we can use averages and solve word problems associated with it. So we know that the average of a set of numbers is the sum of those numbers divided by the numbers in the list. So for instance, the average of, let's say, five numbers is the sum of those five numbers divided by five. Now, if we multiply both sides by n, we could say that the average times n is equal to the sum. So let's say if we have the sum of six numbers. That's going to be the average of six numbers times six. Or if we have the sum, let's say, of eight numbers, that's the average of those eight numbers times eight. So make sure you're familiar with these two formulas. Now, there's some other things that we can do. For instance, let's say if we have the sum of eight numbers, that's equal to the sum of five numbers plus the sum of three numbers. Does that make sense? Now, the sum of eight numbers can be written as the average of eight numbers times eight. The sum of five numbers can be written as the average of five numbers times five. And the sum of three numbers, you could write it as the average of three numbers times three. I'm gonna be using a variety of these equations when solving problems associated with averages. So I'm gonna give you an introduction of what we're gonna be doing in this video. So let's focus on this problem. 108, Lisa took four chemistry exams and received an average score of 82. If she scores a 97 on her next chemistry exam, what will be her average for all five exams? So let's write down what we know. Our goal is to calculate the average of all five exams. So we're looking for A5. We have the average of four of her exams, that's 82. And the score on her fifth exam, you could say the sum of the fifth test, that's 97. With this information, how can we calculate the average of all five exams? You know what, let me not write S5, because that could represent the sum of five numbers. Let me write S1 is 97. So even though that's the fifth test, that's basically the sum of one test. So we could say that the sum of all five exams is equal to the sum of four exams plus the sum of one exam. Now S5, the sum of all five exams, is the average of those five exams times five. S4 is the sum of the first four exams, so that's going to be the average of those four exams times four. S1, you could write it as the average of one exam times one, but we know S1 is 97. So now let's plug in everything we know and let's solve for this variable, A5. So it's A5 times five. A4 is 82 and S1 is 97. So 82 times four. 80 times four is 320 because eight times four is 32. Two times four is eight. So 320 plus eight, this is gonna be 328. Now, let's add that to 97. Three twenty eight plus ninety seven is four twenty five. Now, to get a five by itself, we need to divide both sides by five. So the average of the five exams is four twenty five divided by five, which is eighty five. So this right here is the answer. Answer choice C. Number one oh nine. 
Gerald's average score for nine tests was 96. If the sum of the scores of two of his tests was 178, then what was his average for the other seven tests? So let's write down what we know. His average score for nine exams was 96. The sum of the two scores of his test, so that's S2, is 178. What was his average for the other seven tests? So we're looking for A7. So let's write an equation. The sum of all of his nine exams must equal the sum of the first two exams plus the sum of the scores on the seven exams. 2 plus 7 is 9, so S9 equals S2 plus S7. Now, S9, we can write that as the average of those nine exams times 9. S2, we don't need to write it as A2 times 2 because we know what S2 is equal to. So I'm just going to leave it as S2. S7, on the other hand, we do not have the value of. So we need to write it as A7 times 7. Now A9, we can see that it's 96. So this is going to be 96 times 9. S2 is 178. So now all we need to do is solve for A7. 96 times 9, that's 864. Our next step is to subtract both sides by 178. So let's clear away some stuff. Now, 864 minus 178, that is equal to 686. So that's A7 times 7. And then we need to divide both sides by 7. 686 divided by 7, that's 98. So the average of the other seven exams is 98. So D is the correct answer. 110. If the average of eight numbers is 46 and the average of three of these is 51, what is the average of the other five numbers? Well, let's write an equation. Actually, before we write an equation, let's uh, make a list of what we know. So the average of eight numbers is 46. And the average of three of those numbers is 51. So A3 is 51. What is the average of the other five numbers? So what's A of five? So based on the way we solved the last two problems, go ahead and try this one. So let's write an equation with the sum of these numbers. The sum of eight numbers is basically the sum of three numbers plus the sum of five numbers. S8 is A8 times eight. S3 is A sub three times three. And the sum of five numbers is the average of those five numbers times five. Now, A sub eight is 46. A sub three is 51. And so now we can calculate the average of the other five numbers. 46 times 8 is 368. 51 times 3 is 153. Now let's subtract both sides by 153. Three sixty eight minus one fifty three. That's equal to two hundred and fifteen. Now let's divide both sides by five. So the average of the other five numbers is two fifteen divided by five, which is forty three. So B is the right answer. Now, for those of you who have been watching my videos, if you like them, and if you haven't done so already, uh, feel free to subscribe to this channel. Also, when you get a chance, you can check out this website. I'm going to post some links, and you can get access to 
uh, a lot of my playlists like physics, chemistry, algebra. You can find all of that on this website, especially for those of you who might be studying for, let's say, a physics exam or a chemistry final exam. I'm going to post some links at this website where you could find help uh, for those uh, things. So let's get back to the video. 111. There are seven numbers in set X. The average of the first two numbers is 79, and the sum of the last five numbers is 290. What is the average of all seven numbers in set X? So we know that A sub 2, the average of the first two numbers, is 79. The sum of the last five numbers, S5, is 290. What is the average of all seven numbers? What is A sub 7? So let's write an equation. Let's say that S sub 7 is S2 plus S5. 2 plus 5 is 7. Now, the sum of the seven numbers is the average of those seven numbers times 7. The sum of the first two numbers is the average of those two numbers times 2. And we, we already have the value of S sub 5, so we're not going to change this. Our goal is to calculate A7. A sub 2 is 79. S sub 5 is 290. 79 times 2 is 158. And then we have 158 plus 290. That's going to be 448. So we have a sub 7 times 7 is equal to 448. So now our last step is to divide both sides by 7. So the average of all 7 numbers in set x is 448 divided by 7, which comes out to be 64. So that's the answer for this problem. Number 112. The average of a list of five numbers is y. When an additional number is added to the list, the average of all six numbers is y plus 3. Which of the following is the value of the number added to the list in terms of y? So now, we're going to follow the exact same process. The only difference is we're dealing with variables this time. So the average of five numbers, a of 5, is y. The average of six numbers is y plus 3. So that additional number, the sum of that additional number is what we're looking for, s sub 1. Keep in mind, s sub 1 and a sub 1 have the same value. s sub 1 is a sub 1 times 1. So whether you use it as a1 or s1, it doesn't matter. So we can say that the sum of all six numbers is the sum of the first five numbers plus the sum of the last number. The sum of the six numbers is going to be the average of those six numbers times six. The sum of the five numbers is the average of those five numbers times five. Now, a of six, we know it's y plus three. a sub five is y. So all we need to do is solve for S1. So let's go ahead and distribute the 6 to y plus 3. So we have 6 times y, which is 6y, and then 6 times 3, which is 18. y times 5 is the same as 5y. Subtracting both sides by 5y, we get that S1 is, is y plus 18. So that is the additional number that we've added to the list, which means answer choice A is the right answer. So that's basically it for this video. Now you know how to solve word problems dealing with averages. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.